Factoring a quadratic expression with a leading coefficient of 1. Here's a quadratic expression. The degree of the polynomial is 2, and here's the, another polynomial with degree 2, and another degree 2 polynomial, and another polynomial with degree 2. Just so happens that each of these have three terms. The greatest common factor for each of these quadratic expressions is 1, which wouldn't be very useful when it says, you know, provide factors for this quadratic expression. We would like some different factors. So what we're going to do now is perform something called a trial and check method. For these tri trinomials, we're going to assume there's going to be two factors. In fact, we're going to assume that the factors are going to be two binomials. And we're basically going to go, go ahead and unwrap the FOIL method. So what does that mean? Well, let's illustrate it with some examples. So we're going to assume this is going to be two factors, and we're going to perform the FOIL method. So in the first position, it's got to be y times y, or y and y, so that you get y times y will get you y squared. Now we're going to make an educated guess on the last position. Well, we could try 9 and 4, but 9 times 4 will get you 36, but is there any way we could add 9 and 4 to get 15? Huh, there's no way. And so we are using this trial and check method, but there is an underlying question. When the quadratic expression has a leading coefficient of 1, we say each of these have a leading coefficient of 1 because they're invisible. Here's the leading coefficient of 1. Now I'm going to take it away. So there's your leading coefficient of 1. What is that underlying question? Let's, let's bring it to reality here. So what are two integers that multiply to 36 and add to negative 15. Huh. So it certainly isn't 9 and 4. So why don't we erase 9 and 4? So we tried, and that's not going to get us very far. So why don't we try 12 and 3? 12 times 3 gets me 36. But is it positive 12? Is it positive 3? Turns out it's got to be negative 12 and negative 3. Now, this procedure is never over until you actually check check your factors. What do we mean? Uh, what, do you, what do we mean by check? Well, we're simply going to use F-O-I-L. First position, y squared. Outside position, negative 3y. Inside position, negative 12y. And then last, negative 12 times negative 3, we do get plus 36. Is negative 3y minus 12y negative 15? And the answer is yes. So this checks. When this checks, circle your two factors. So this quadratic expression factors into exactly two binomials. The first binomial is y minus 12. The second binomial is, is y minus 3. And there are two factors. The first factor is y minus 12. The second factor is y minus 3. Why don't we do a few more? We're going to assume this one has exactly two binomials, x and x for the first position. 16. Hmm. Should we try 4 and 4? I don't think so. Why don't we try 8 and 2? What do our signs have to be? Let's try, let's try subtract 8 or subtract 8x and then add 2x. Remember, you're not done until you actually check. So first position, x squared. 
outside position plus 2x inside position minus 8x and then last position minus 16. Once again it's a yes. So when this checks then circle your two factors. The first factor is x minus 8, the second factor is x plus 2. Remember factors are separated by the operation of multiplication. Here we go. First position, x and x, because x times x gets you x squared. Last position, well, 39 doesn't have too many factors. So the good thing about 39 is 3 goes into 39 13 times. Hmm, what should our signs be? Why don't we take away, thir take away 3x and add 13x? Does this check? Can we complete our checking process? x squared plus 13x minus 3x minus 39. Once again, make sure you check. This procedure is never over until you check. So if it checks, then circle your two factors. Last example here. Let's make some more room. So I'm going to delete this. Lost a G there. Oop. And why don't we move this up? This was our example D. So with the leading coefficient of 1, there is an underlying question. You know, what are two integers that multiply to negative 24 and what? Add to positive 10. So if you answer that question, you start getting very good at this trial and check method. Once again, the greatest common factor of all three terms is 1, so that's not very useful. We're going to assume this quadratic expression has exactly two factors. So we start with parentheses. First position is y and y. And let's try 6 and 4. Hmm. I need to somehow add 10. So your signs would be this, right? This procedure, remember, is never over until you check. So what are we checking? The first position, outside position, inside position, and last position. So we got our y squared. We got plus 4y, and we got plus 6y. And we got plus 24. Uh-oh, that's not good. So this does not check. So that's a no. Now, when you're factoring quadratic expressions, it's almost better to cross out instead of erasing because you have to be very, very persistent. You gotta try and try and try again, and then you gotta check and check and check again. So instead of erasing, you might wanna just cross out, but don't cross through the signs. Cross a little bit higher, because the next trial is what? Your next trial is very likely going to be y, y for the first position. Once again, six and four, well, and you might say, hmm, it's got to be a positive and a negative, right? We'll check again. y squared minus 4y plus 6y minus 24. So this time we got the minus 24, but did we get positive 10y? And the answer is no. So if it's a no, we can't circle those two factors. In fact, we're crossing it out. we got to try something else. Now, I'm pretending I don't know the answer. I really do see the answer. So why don't we try y and y? I do need to pretend that I'm a student sometimes. 
you don't always get the answer on the very, very first try. So let's try y and y. We get y squared. Why don't we try 12 and 2? And to illustrate some of this persistence, I want to purposely get this wrong. Let's put a minus there and a plus here. Once again, this procedure is never over until you check. y squared is now the first position. Outside is plus 2y. Inside is minus 12y. And the last term is minus 24. Whew! This is still a no. Right there. That's not it. In fact, what should we do with this? We should cross this out. And try again. Perseverance. Determination. Make more time. Try and try again. Try y and y. It's because y times y gets you y squared. Hmm. I think we should still try 12 and 2. But this time, let's move the sign here and here. And what do we get? Ooh, let's check. y squared minus 2y plus 12y. So now, e, now what? Subtract 24. Ooh, there we go. Yes. And isn't that a good feeling? So we call this the trial and check method. So this quadratic expression has how many factors? The first factor is y plus 12. The second factor is y minus 2. So there's two factors for this quadratic expression.